We have now completed all of the modeling and animation. All we need to do now is to set up our render. We can use a hardware viewport 2.0 render for this animation, which is what we have been using throughout our whole build process. To see what we will render, in the viewport view menu, which is view here in camera settings, let's switch our resolution gate on, which will show our render cutoff areas. Let's reposition our frame to capture all of that. And I'm just going to hide my mesh editor so we can get a bit more of the view. Okay, that's good. Let's hide our grid again. And let's just look at some of the key attributes for hardware renderer 2.0. So in a viewport 2.0 menu selection, let's click on our options. In the screen-based ambient occlusion, let's enable that. And that grounds the objects in our scene. Just going to close the outliner so we can see it a bit better. There we go. In the scroll down, to our anti-aliasing and switch on multi-sampling, anti-aliasing, and our sample count is set to eight. On some hardware, it may be higher, but for this machine, that's absolutely fine. When we press play, dependent on your hardware, the animation should still play at a brisk pace, even with these viewport settings, especially when compared to an equivalent scene in Cinema 4D. We can still, however, see some transform locators and falloff objects for the buildings. We can hide these by unchecking show locators in the viewport. So let's just do that. Show locators. To make the scene a bit more lively, let's add some lights. In the lighting viewport menu, let's switch on use all lights. We could have pressed the number seven as well. And let's switch to the rendering shelf and add an ambient light, which is down in the bottom there. It's a bit too bright, but rather than reduce the intensity, let's just change the color to a sky blue because we want this light to mimic the sky. Uh, that's good. And we will just change the value of that down to about 0.65. Going to add a directional light now to be our sun. Okay, and let's just move that so that we can see it. Ah, that's showing our lights. So show lights. There we go. We can now see it. See a small arrow there. Let's just orientate that and move it around. The other thing we should do is in our lighting menu, add shadows. There we go. And we're also going to just, in our shadows, use depth map shadows and increase our resolution to 2048 to reduce jaggies. And now we should get some nice, strong shadows. I'm just gonna switch my step snap off. So double click. Oh, there's my tool settings are hiding there. So double click and Switch off relative step snap. There we go. Uh, yeah, that's good. As this is our sun, I'm just going to give that a slight tint of yellow. A bit more. That's fine. And increase the intensity to two. So I might just knock that back a bit and 1.5. The final light we can add is a point light, which is this one here. And we're just going to use that to pressing the W key to give a bit of secondary light onto this front face. But for this one, I am just going to keep this white and reduce the intensity to 0.4. We can now render. So let's open the render settings by pressing the render settings icon here. Alternatively, we could switch to our rendering menu and go to render, render settings. Let's bring that across. In the common tab of the render settings, let's first check our color management settings, which are here. Here, we've got this set up correctly. Uh, we have our apply out trans transform to renderer and our output transform is sRGB gamma, which matches the sRGB gamma that we've been using in our viewport. Our image format is set to PNG 
And we've also set our frame animation to name hash dot extension. And we can see a preview of what our file name will be up here. And we've already set our end frame to 90, which is the full width of our animation, just making sure we're not capturing everything. Yep, 90 is great. And the final thing is we'll just check that our preset is set to HD 1080, which it is. That's fantastic. To render an animation, Maya can render in the background and allow you to carry on working with Maya uh, using render and batch render. So we'll just set that off. And we are done. This has saved the images to our images folder, which we can then drop into After Effects to preview our finished animation. I've already done this. So I'm just going to quickly switch to After Effects. And here is a little comp that I set up earlier with a previous render. And here is our hardware viewpoint 2.0. And here's just a gradient. And as we were using PNG, the transparent background came in. That's great. So we have now finished our first Maya scene. All that is potentially left is to do a bit of tidying up in the outliner using groups for our lights and fall offs and repro meshes. But I can leave you to do that. I really hope that you have enjoyed our first Cinema 4D2 Maya tutorial and I look forward to seeing you in our next one very soon. This is Mike Griggs. Thank you. Goodbye.